Okay, so I think, uh, great. Hi, and uh, welcome from the University of Windsor uh, here in uh, Windsor, Ontario, Canada. It's my pleasure to uh, be with you virtually. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Chris Bush. I am the Associate Vice President of Enrollment. Uh, you Uh, Dina Wang, our Director of uh, International Recruitment at the University of Windsor. Uh, Dina, do you want to quickly say hello? Hi, everyone. I'm sorry. I'm having some troubles with my camera. Um, my name is Dina. I've been working at the university for over 10 years, and I'm looking forward to work with this group. And then let us know how we can support you and your students. Great. Um, and so it was my pleasure uh, a few weeks ago to be in person at Maple um, to get to see their operations and meet with prospective students as well. Uh, and so I, I really want to thank them and take a moment uh, as one of the University of Windsor's key partners uh, in the region uh, for their amazing work. Uh, in recruiting students to the University of Windsor. We welcome them uh, and really appreciate that. So um, with that, uh, let's get going. So in the next probably um, 30 minutes per se, I'm going to cover a little bit of information about why, in my opinion, studying in Canada uh, is an amazing opportunity, why the city of Windsor is a, a great destination um, there, is, there as well, um, along with our programs, uh, et cetera, um, too. Um, at the end, there'll be an opportunity for you to uh, answer, uh, qu ask questions, and uh, the, the colleagues from Maple also will be available to uh, talk there as well. So first, let's start with uh, a country which I love, and that's the country in which I was born and raised, and that's Canada. You know, Canada is an amazing study destination and welcomes hundreds of thousands of international learners. And the big reason, in my opinion, is because of the quality of education. Um, our public universities across the country are, are globally recognized, globally ranked for their high quality um, academic programs, but also for all of the research activities that we have. Um, that is a really an, an important element um, there as well. Also, if you think about studying in Canada from a budgeting standpoint, our, our tuition rates across the country are typically about 25% less than many other destinations, making, making Canada a great study destination um, there as well. One other benefit to, you know, international learners such as yourself often want to get experience um, taking uh, academic programming, but also experience within a foreign workforce. So, for example, coming to Canada and being employed either part time while doing your studies or being able to stay back after you're done your degree to get Canadian experience. And that may lead to other opportunities within the country or also to take those skills back uh, to your home country or on to another academic academic journey or employment. And, and that work element is so important. And Canada still continues to welcome uh, uh, temporary workers for um, up to three years under a postgraduate work permit there as well. The last thing too is, you know, you know we have, uh, we have a, a great quality of life. Right, Canada as a socialized healthcare system, you know, very friendly immigration practices, a warm, welcoming, diverse community. And I'll talk about that uh, there as well. And you know, it's incredibly, incredibly safe, including you know being on campus at night, et cetera, there as well too. So let's talk about um, my uh, the University of Windsor, or at least the Windsor City to start with. Um, you'll see this this great picture um, to, can provide a little bit of context. All right? well, I always point this out when meeting with um, with partners and with students. The green space on the bottom is a five kilometer trail that is at the base of the university campus. So that's in Windsor, Ontario. Across the river is Detroit, Michigan. So we are right on the border. One of the only institutions in all of Canada that's truly international. I can see Detroit, Michigan and um, from my office. And that's an amazing uh, thing there as well. We are an incredibly diverse community um, because of the nature of our connection with the US, a large Arabic um, uh, diaspora, a large black diaspora there as well on campus there as well and across in our community. Individuals from sub-Saharan Africa will find community in, in Windsor there as well because of that. That's such an important element when thinking about where to study is finding a sense of 
place and belonging um, within the community. You're going to spend a lot of time learning in classrooms, interacting with students and faculty. But one thing that's important is you need to find home there as well. And you'll find that here in Windsor. We have about 340,000 people where we have great weather um, uh, nearly year round. We get all four seasons, but um, you know during the summer, weather goes up to about 30 degrees Celsius. And you can be wearing a short sleeve shirt like I am wearing today uh, for you know nearly seven months of the year, which is really great. The other thing too that I like to point out that's different is our cost of living. Because we're located Um, a bit of a bit of context. Uh, you'll see the University of Windsor is located right at the bottom, uh, to the north. The only place in Canada where the U.S. is actually to our northern neighbor um, is Detroit, Michigan. As I mentioned before, a few hours from Toronto, but close proximity to every major center in the U.S. We are five minutes over that bridge you see on your screen from Detroit. Uh, but only a few hours from Chicago, New York, et cetera, there as well. Um, and you have great opportunities to explore the region uh, through our transportation and 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 ethnic cuisines are, are very uh, uh, prevalent, including African uh, cuisine, grocery stores and restaurants, including close to campus, um, too. Just uh, graphically or uh, uh, pictorially, just wanted to show you the difference again. Once again, bottom section is Canada, top section is the U.S., perfectly placed uh, to be able to access all those great uh, activities that typically come to big centers. If you're a big football fan, and uh, when I say football, we're talking American football, but you know, football, soccer, everything comes to Detroit. So if you like culture, you like art, you like sports, everything is close in close proximity. And our International Student Center will help uh, be able to get you um, uh, a visitor's permit to go to the U.S. there as well. And it's connected by uh, our transit system. So spend a few minutes talking about uh, why the University of Windsor, uh, kind of by numbers, uh, just quickly um, there as well. Um, one thing we're really proud of our ranking and reputation. You know, we are a top institution in all of the world, top five in world university rankings. We moved up 100 places because of our research, scholarship, and creative activities uh, within the last year. So that is an impressive accomplishment of our faculty um, and the people that help support research at the institution, which starts at the undergraduate level and goes all the way up to doctoral programs. We're number seventh for non-medical uh, in Canada uh, there as well, which is a real testament to um, the community and, and faculty that uh, comprise the University of Windsor. We now have nearly about 18,000 students on campus um, there as well, but primarily full-time learners, about 16,000 and change. But we have many mature and part-time learners that take courses uh, with us too. But one thing that I do think sets us apart uh, compared to other institutions is our commitment to a, a low student to faculty ratio. At the University of Windsor, you will your faculty members will get to know your name. And that's really different. And I was recently traveling um, with the Dean of Engineering. And, you know, when he's teaching a class, you know, he's teaching a class to a group, a, a group of learners that um, he gets to know their names. That doesn't happen at, at other institutions, mostly what larger ones, right? You could be in a classroom with six, 700 people. The only people you're going to build a relationship with are the other students and the teaching assistant. That faculty member, great, um, amazing researcher, but building that relationship, not, not going to be as, as easy compared to the University of Windsor. That's something we pride ourselves on too. We have, you know, hundreds of uh, campus clubs, uh, you know, African Students uh, Association, and and many other groups uh, and organizations that that cross the whole spectrum. So you'll once again find a sense of place and belonging on campus too. Um, one one unique element um, for international students specifically is our Ignite a Work Study program. 
the, we employ over 400 students on campus, and most of them are international students. These people are getting paid to um, develop their skills. Each placement um, is a paid opportunity with, with dedicated learning outcomes. Um, and so you won't be doing, um, you'll be doing tasks that actually can translate to something you can put on a resume. And we have a whole experiential learning program that goes around that. Our, our grads are in demand. Uh, our statistics uh, continue to track uh, graduates um, with a 95% employment rate over two years uh, and uh, slightly less uh, over six months. So that that's really an impressive uh, element too. And, and the salaries at public Ontario universities that people can command are significantly higher. You know, um, the average salary for a new grad in Windsor is about 54000 Canadian dollars, uh, depending on the country in which you're you're joining us from. In Nigeria, you can add two zeros, and that typically is the the starting salary for a, a new uh, new employee um, there, there as well. Um, we have learners from nearly 85 different countries, uh, including uh, all across uh, Africa. Uh, we've been in Nigeria for a long, long time. Um, deep connections there as well from students and partners such as Maple, but also in Kenya and Ghana and many other countries uh, across the, the, co the continent there too. Our, our international student body is actually now getting closer to about 28 to 30%, mostly in graduate programs, which I'll be talking about uh, later. But you'll find someone from your country at the University of Windsor. Um, and one unique element at Canadian public institutions is our, our commitment to hands-on learning. We really recognize the importance of taking what you learn in the classroom and being able to apply it in a real-world sense. And that's why cooperative education or a co-op program um, is really important for you to consider for undergraduate studies. This enables you to get paid work experience within your field as part of your degree. Co-op students take eight semesters of academic courses, but also three semesters of paid work within their discipline. So for example, if I was an accounting student in Odette's Bachelors of Commerce program, I might do a three placements, one at uh, PwC, another one with revenue, a Canada Revenue Agency, and maybe a third one in a consulting firm. These are three employers that hire out of um, their co-op placement. But it also allows me as a learner to explore different disciplines. Maybe I really like accounting. Um, as a molecular biologist, not my strength, but uh, once again, uh, that uh, is how co-op works. Now, as a public institution, we really are committed to supporting learners holistically. Here's just a, a list of some of the student services that we offer. These are all um, accessible for international students, but also we have dedicated supports that I'll be talking about. But realistically, we recognize that learners need more than just a faculty member. They need to be able to have study space. They need to be able to have counseling access. If they need to go to the doctor or dentist, be able to access that on campus. And all of that is at the University of Windsor there too. Speaking of things on campus, uh, we offer uh, first year undergraduate students a guaranteed access to residence in the fall semester. And we also provide off campus housing support um, there as well. The university is completely surrounded by a residential neighborhood and, and therefore, um, you know, students can elect, mostly graduate students, can elect to study off campus and be able to walk, uh, take the bus to, uh, to campus there as well. Typically costs a little bit less, but for undergraduate students, I really recommend you consider living in residence. Um, it's a great opportunity uh, to meet people, but also not to have to worry about settling the, the settlement process being as difficult because you're you're fully supported by a residence community and and other learners there too. Um, just briefly, um, wanted to point out once again, you know, the opportunities for for settlement afterwards are very um, strong in Canada. I'd encourage you to explore those opportunities there as well. All of our undergraduate programs have a path to postgraduate work along with our graduate programs um, there, there as well, um, too. As I mentioned about co-op, you also can explore a variety of different um, other hands-on learning opportunities um, than co-op. Undergraduate research, we get students involved in, in year one in, in our Outstanding Scholars program. 
right? That is hands-on uh, employable skills that you're developing. If not, you participate in the volunteer internship program or field placements or practicums or all those related elements too. Or if you're an entrepreneur, you get um, you get support through our Epi Center, which is dedicated to supporting entrepreneurs take their idea from conceptualization all the way to market um, there as well. If we're, although not mostly relevant in, in the Nigerian context or in a lot of uh, sub-Saharan Africa, we do have a whole language program um, there too. So I'll just uh, spend a few minutes talking about our academic programs um, and, and then we'll, we'll wrap up and open it to question and answer and I'll have Dina hop in to see if there's something I missed. So our degree options, I, I, I threw up this slide to, to raise awareness about uh, the one, the Canadian educational landscape, but also how you might be able to once again, save some money too, as part of your degree. If, if you're coming for an undergraduate degree, a baccalaureate degree, we have two options in most of our programs, a four years honors, which is a pathway to graduate programming. We also have a three-year program in many common disciplines, including like, for example, computer science. You know, doing a general bachelor's of uh, computer science would allow you to save 25% of the cost of an education. And that's an important element too. But it does limit future opportunities about graduate school. But sometimes for learners coming from international markets, that's completely okay. We also have at the graduate level, amazing course-based graduate programs. These are um, don't require a thesis supervisor, have a very simple application process that are completed typically over three to four terms um, now. Those, those are great opportunities, not requiring a provincial attestation letter, which I'll be talking about there. And they are, they are career related. Um, and I'll spend some time there. But once again, they're terminal. So they're not meant for students that are going into um, a potentially a PhD in the future. And then we have our research and PhD programs um, there as well. So most of the time today, I'm going to be talking about our undergraduate programs and our course-based grad programs. Now we offer 190 plus academic programs. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about them all. I'll just highlight some of the ones I think are the most um, in demand from grad from international learners and start with our, our faculty of humanities and social sciences, one of our biggest faculties. So they have great programming in the creative arts, in the social sciences and professional studies. And the professional studies is kind of the big areas in demand. So we're talking about law and politics. We're talking about psychology. We're talking about um, communication, media, and film. These are amazing programs. And for example, our psychology program globally recognized undergraduate masters and PhD. Amazing opportunities, but there's lots of other things there for you too, um, including in the masters and PhD field. In the business uh, area, uh, we offer a bachelor's of commerce um, in a variety of specializations. Uh, strategy, marketing, HR, accountancy, or accounting, um, you know, et cetera. And also the opportunities to do it with co-op, but also in combination with computer science, economics, and many others. That bachelor's of business administration and computer science is so in demand. Employers these days don't have enough people that have a good understanding of both sides of the business. The business side, the sales, the marketing, and the tech side. So the computer science space. They have great people in IT that are computer scientists, and they have great business people, but not sometimes people with both skills. So this is a huge one that's in demand um, and also available with co-op. We also have graduate programs in business administration and also in our master management program, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but the Master of Management is is the big program which which sees many learners from from your region come join us, and and I'll tell you why in a second. In the Faculty of Science, one I'm a molecular biologist, so this is a a, a faculty close to my heart. Um, but you know, great academic programming across a lot of different uh, disciplines. Computer science is is absolutely booming. Uh, here in Canada and abroad in, 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 in information systems and applied computing, software engineering, 
all of that, great opportunities. But also on the biomedical sciences, interdisciplinary health sciences and, and all of that, Canada it needs more um, practitioners in this space, uh, either in the pharmaceutical area, biotech, uh, and um, everything related to it. And so these people are, are in demand, uh, essentially, uh, there too. And we also have the research-based programs um, there um, too. In engineering, um, in engineering, we have a, a comprehensive suite of programming. We have everything except now here in Nigeria, there's a few programs we don't have. Um, and that is uh, chemical engineering, petroleum engineering, um, or nuclear. And the reason being is Canada and most of North America is moving away from fossil fuels. And we're moving into more uh, of EV and uh, a lot of mobility related elements and sustainability and climate action, et cetera. So th that, that's nearly a shifting industry. And what we do offer is amazing programs globally ranked in mechanical engineering. Yeah, that's that's a huge one where Windsor is well known, and that's because of our connection to the automotive industry. Detroit, where the Model T was founded um, many years ago by Henry Ford, is is moments from our campus, and that that tradition has continued. So in automotive and aerospace and materials, there's amazing stuff happening, and and great employment opportunities there all at four-year undergraduates, bachelors of applied sciences, and you see many of the other disciplines um, there as well, all available with co-op. And the graduate side, lots of research-based programs. Uh, now, in a minute, I'm going to talk about our course-based options um, there as well, which also typically align to these disciplines in master's and PhD. Um, I'll just pause for a moment and, and talk about one of the first course-based graduate programs, and that's our master's of engineering. So this course-based option, a master's of civil, electrical, environmental, et cetera, is completed over four semesters typically. Uh, can be, they are working to be able to allow you to do it in three semesters, but right now it's four semesters, multiple intakes, January, May, and uh, September. Uh, allows students to be able to get uh, knowledge within the discipline and also across different areas uh, there as well. For uh, now, primarily Nigeria, same as Kenya, we're looking for upper second class, et cetera. Very simple application process, right? All we basically need is scan copies of your transcripts. Um, you don't have to finish your degree. You will have to finish it. But at the time of application, you can start an application um, and we do conditional offers there as well. Also for Nigeria and Kenya, we don't require a language score um, because instruction and, and official languages is English um, there as well. But we do need it to come from the right discipline. So if you're going into civil engineering, you need to come from civil engineering. This is not a pathway to allow a student to change discipline. So that's an important element uh, there as well. Also, if you're coming from an, an architectural background, that's something that requires assessment. Um, some architecture programs are, are very engineering centric and others are more in the um, drawing, uh, that type of area, which might not have the right requirements. So I'll just spend a moment, I think, uh, playing a quick video. Uh, hopefully it works and you can hear it there. I chose the program because of my previous experience marine engineering, mechanical engineering was the was the best fit. Before I came, I actually Googled. University of Windsor just stood out to me. I saw the engineering building, you know, the new building and everything it had, the labs I had to just come. I wanted to experience that. I wanted to be in the labs. It just connected with me. I took a course called Fundamentals of Clean Energy. So with that course, I had project and we had to go to the lab. Everything we were taught, it made sense. So actually see what I was studying. So the lecturers are great. You can ask them questions anytime. I would say you can come here if you want to learn. Put in your work. Because everybody here is brilliant. When you graduate from the University of Windsor, it means you're brilliant. You have to be brilliant to graduate properly. So you have to read, you have to study, take your courses seriously. I would definitely recommend. Even before I graduated, I got a job offer to work as a packaging engineer at Pure Flavor Farm. It's in Limington. <laughs> Now that uh, that video, uh, Chika, uh, she is actually from Nigeria, and I, uh, I'll have to we'll have to check. She might have actually came through uh, Maple, one of our our strongest partners in the region there as well. But just a glimpse into the Faculty of Engineering, uh, but also maybe just in a moment, 
Um, looking at that building and her experience, it's it's common across all of our faculties. You know, the idea of uh, modern technology, that infrastructure, being able to access um, things like that, living walls, and and really a great sense of community is is a really important element uh, there. So talking about our, our course-based graduate programs, I talked about the MNG program, so we won't talk too much about that, but we have the, a, a large uh, number of professional career-related graduate programs that, as I mentioned, uh, have a very straightforward application process, mostly not requiring a thesis supervisor, which is the biggest challenge for international students going on to master's programming. So actuarial sciences, applied computing, booming industry also has an internship program related to it uh, there as well. Applied economics and policy education, um, human kinetics and medical biotech are some big ones. But our master management program is also booming, mostly for students from sub-Saharan Africa, right? Data analytics, international accounting and finance, HR, logistics and supply. These students are taking courses over the 16 months and are staying in Canada for a period of time, maybe up to three years working in industry and, and potentially settling. But if not, coming back to being able to connect. And if I look at the job opportunities in Africa, um, in, in this space, uh, in the accounting space in, in Kenya, or in the logistics and supply of ports across the, the continent, like there's great opportunities for transferable uh, skills there too. We're a comprehensive institution, so we have many programs in other areas that I'm not going to spend too much time talking about education for teacher training, law, nursing, and, and, and uh, human kinetics um, there, there as well. On a, on a tuition side, our, we, as I mentioned, we have 190 plus academic programs, all with a variety of rates. Um, typically, tuition for undergraduate is about 30 to 35,000 Canadian dollars um, for a year. Our course-based graduate programs, um, the, the the cost to complete the whole degree beginning to end is about 35 plus, uh, depending on the program. That's all the tuition for all four semesters. So a great opportunity there as well, plus incidentals and textbooks, et cetera. Going back to my opening comment about cost of living in Windsor, right? You know, cost of living is nearly 40%. I could not afford the house in which I currently in are in right now if I was in Toronto or at least the same type of house because of the, the the huge cost. So many learners want to come to Toronto, but really struggle on, on the housing side because of the high cost. Windsor doesn't have that. So you'll be able to get access to great quality housing at a reduced price there as well. And as I mentioned, our tuition is, is quite um, a bit lower. Our MNG tuition is 40, you know, as you can see, nearly 40% less than the University of Toronto for the same degree uh, uh, there as well. So that that's a huge opportunity. And recognizing that Ontario institutions are all accredited, overseen by quality assurance framework, you know, the education you get here at Windsor is going to be amazing, um, just as amazing as other institutions, but at a more affordable uh, rate uh, there as well. We offer about $14 million in scholarships, all based on merit and all typically determined at the time of your admissions, mostly for our undergraduate and our research programs. One unique selling point for Windsor is our international student guarantee. Learners, the tuition in which they start at is what they finish their degree. There's no increases um, over time. So for a parent planning for undergraduate studies, you know they don't know what tuition is going to be in year two, year three, and year four. We have a guarantee that says the tuition which you start in year one is going to be exactly the same. So for parents, that that's an important element. Also, we recognize that the the currency fluctuations in some countries, uh, like Nigeria, for example, make budgeting difficult. We we don't want to add to that, and we provide an opportunity to be able to lock in that the tuition rate. Um, I'll just spend a minute talking about admission criteria. You know, basically for undergraduate, we're looking for a good student and uh, your colleagues at, at Maple will be able to give you the, the background on the numbers of A's and B's that are needed in what different curriculum for uh, Nigeria. And if you're joining from Ghana or other countries there as well, but we also accept uh, the UK curriculum, Canadian curriculum and many other options uh, there as well recognizing that Maple also runs uh, Canadian programming in uh, grade 12 there as well, so Ontario um, curricula. At the graduate level, as I mentioned before, we're looking for 2-1 upper second class um, there as well. We typically, for our course-based graduate programs, don't require 
um, any other additional tests. But for some programs in research, you might be required. For example, if you do an LLM, you're going to need to uh, provide additional materials uh, there, there as well, too. Um, so your counselor will be able to talk about that. Um, just briefly, um, for fall, I would encourage you to continue to, to think about applying now. Um, some programs in our graduate programs have, have closed already, but we're still accepting applications in many different areas. You typically need at least, I would say, minimum four months, and I'll walk you through a time frame in, in, in a moment, um, but you need at least four to eight months to, to think about it. Graduate programs, we have a certain number of seats, and so therefore they fill up. So if you're thinking about joining us for fall in engineering, there's still a little bit of time, but not a lot, and I'll, I'll tell you why. But some other areas are full. So I encourage you to think about applying early, um, you know, apply for January now and get secure an offer. Um, but if you wait too long, um, they're, they're going to say that we're sorry, we're full um, too. Application time, basically six to eight weeks for undergraduate, um, about eight to 12 weeks for graduate programs, and your counselor at Maple will be able to, to, to help you there as well. As I mentioned earlier, one of the great wraparound supports we have is our International Student Center. Talented colleagues that deliver great programming specifically for international students. They work with campus collaborators to deliver other programming that, that, that are tailored to international students, such as on our career area, how to apply for jobs, uh, how to write a Canadian resume, you know, all those all those great things, along with a whole bunch of social and cultural activities um, delivered by amazing individuals that really know the international space. So I, I'm just going to spend a few minutes before we go to question and answer. Uh, and, and that's to talk about some of the changes in Canada's immigration system. Um, the first is for undergraduate learners, the requirement to uh, provide a provincial attestation letter. The University of Windsor uh, is providing provincial attestation letters, which are required to be included in your application for a study permit to undergraduate learners, provided that they have accepted their offer and provided a tuition deposit um, there as well. What will happen uh, after those two steps are completed, you'll get notified that your attestation letter is available. You download it off the UIN site student system, our student information system, and you can use that for your application. Graduate students, the course-based grad programs I mentioned, MNG, MOM, uh, actuarial sciences, et cetera, you, they do not require a uh, PAL. No attestation letter is required. However, they do need to submit an application for a study permit and select from the drop down menu under your level of study. They need to select university master's degree. That's a really important um, uh, uh, element there as well. You also have to be able to provide proof that you have enough money to provide uh, to cover your first year of tuition. Um, so that typically is done in the form of either a GIC um, or a financial records and your counselor at Maple will be able to help you with that uh, there as well. And also be able to show that you can cover one year of living expenses of approximately 20,000 Canadian dollars. So once you have um, your, your deposit, you'll get together all your information to be able to support your study permit application, um, you know, there as well. Um, in Nigeria, I just wanted to point out that there is two ways of applying for a study permit. One is um, the traditional ordinary method, but also there is the stu a study direct stream um, for individuals that are legal residents of Nigeria that are admitted to the University of Windsor that elect to use a GIC to demonstrate um, from like CIBC or, or many other financial institutions, demonstrate financial proof there as well they have an expedited um, evaluation mechanism there. And the reason being is study permit processing time right now is taking about 11 weeks. And that's a long time. Um, and so I would really encourage you, if you're thinking of, of applying for um, fall, you really need to start today. Um, if not, here's an example of a timeline. And you can see from the time you start an application to the time you receive a study permit, um, is approximately um, three to four months. So therefore, um, you need to think about work starting the process early. So right now, I would encourage learners to think about fall if they if they are still there. 
uh, if not, uh, start applying for winter and secure admissions. Undergraduate students join us in September, but they also join us in January too. So that's completely okay. And our graduate programs, those master's course-based programs, typically have students joining year-round. So lots of great options there as well. If you have any questions, um, you can reach out to your colleagues at Maple. Uh, you can also visit, ask, visit ask.uwindsor.ca which is our repository for all things U Windsor um, there as well. And, and also we do have colleagues in Nigeria, Yotunde, and in um, on the other side of the continent, uh, Linda, and your colleagues at Maple can help you connect with them as well if you have any questions. Um, I would also encourage you to visit our website, future.uwindsor.ca, where you can chat with current students. Um, we have great students from Africa um, there as well. Ask them a question um, and have a great conversation to learn more about the institution. So with that, uh, I'll open it to uh, questions and ask the colleagues from Maple about how they would like to proceed. And if not, I'll ask my colleague, Dina, who's joining by audio, if there's anything I missed. Okay. Um, so if you have any questions for Dr. Chris, you can leave them in the group chat and then he'll take them one by one. Um, but I believe that um, Dina can take, take over now so that those that have their questions can leave them in the chat box. Then when she's done, you can address them one by one. Sure. Dina, anything I missed? No, it's very comprehensive. Yeah. Great. Um, and so I'll, I'll turn myself quickly to the, the chat uh, that, I, that I see. Um, so the the first question I see is a qualification, uh, looking for a graduate program in sociology. I think, you know, once again, the, the University of Windsor, our, our Faculty of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences does have a very broad um, amount of programming, including PhD programs and, and master's programs. You might want to encourage exploring um, that uh, as, an, as an option there as well. Um, alternatively, depending on what your undergraduate uh, program is, you might look at a, a graduate program in a related discipline there too. Uh, the next question is about spot as assessment, pre-assessment, et cetera. You know, your colleagues from Maple can help um, use our, our staff on the ground to provide input in regards to pre-assessment to help align your interest before submitting an application. So for example, I would encourage you to read out to your counselor at Maple. Uh, uh, he or she can work with Yutunde and be able to provide some recommendations on uh, academic programs and your qualifications. They know the, the educational system best. We don't provide application waivers um, there as well. So sorry about that, that was, that was another uh, question. Now, next question is about, is there accounting as a course? So um, I'll take a little bit um, to, to talk about that. So we have a fully accredited accounting program at the University of Windsor, both undergraduate and in our master's program, um, we have two options. Uh, one is our master of management in international accounting and finance, of course, has many courses in accountancy um, there related. Our Bachelor's of Commerce is a full four-year program, which has a pathway to being a, a CPA. That's a fully accredited program there as well. We also have a, a Master's of an MBA that is for professional accountancies. Um, that also is a pathway to, to uh, CPA in, in Canada there as well. So we got lots in the areas of accountancy um, there as well, all a fully accredited undergraduate with co-op and, and things like that. So lots of great opportunities to explore um, the, there, there as well. Um, next question is about, uh, can you use a study loan from an independent uh, organization like Empower to finance in mechanical? Absolutely. Um, the University of Windsor is a listed institution with Empower, um, and you can work with them or any other provider to, to help fund your education there as well. Um, they can help you with remittance to the University of Windsor. Um, or you can remit through CIBC Global Pay, International Student Pay, and, and many other options um, there, there as well. So I'd encourage you to explore that. Uh, and once again, um, if you're looking, if you're self-funding your education through Empower, you want to make sure that the costs for education are as reasonable as possible. So we provide a really great option, right? As I mentioned, as I mentioned before, tuition rate is quite a bit lower, cost of living is lower, so therefore the amount you need to borrow. Um, potentially could be significantly less compared to going to an institution in Toronto. 
um, there as well. But you might elect to go to Toronto when you graduate to look for employment uh, there before uh, settling or before returning. Um, next, and I think Dina answered it, she's on the chat as well, um, uh, media, telecommunications, mass communications, you know, we, we, we definitely have programming in CMF. Also, um, encourage people to think about um, at the Bachelors of Commerce programming, um, there is there is options, um, you know, there as well, um, in marketing and in that whole space that also connects to media telecommunications uh, there as well. Okay, um, next, uh, what are my chances for a master's degree in civil? Um, 3.14. Now, um, I, I'm going to I'm going to probably ask you to connect with your counselor because I do suspect 3.14 is a lower second class, um, but that's something that they can confirm with you. If so, that would not be a competitive for entrance into our graduate program. Um, the master's degree in project management, depending on what the grades may be also used to determine your eligibility, we also look at the last two years of your study. So I would encourage you to connect with your counselor. Um, they can work with um, they can work with uh, Yutunde, who is our in-country representative in Lagos, and, and see about uh, looking at pre-assessment. We don't want you to apply for something we don't think you're going to be qualified for. Uh, Dina answered a question in regards to six uh, third class and civil, and once again, um, that wouldn't meet eligibility. Um, a colleague, our students interested in a master of management, uh, once again, second lower, it's, that's a problem, uh, and, and I'm sorry about that. Um, we require second upper, so two to one second class upper to be competitive um, for those programs uh, there as well. The, the, the academic background in mathematics would be fine. Uh, you have good quantitative skills, and depending on what the last two years of study is, uh, that potentially is there, but that that may be a, a, a challenge um, there as well. Oh my God. I also see uh, my colleague Yutunde, who's our, our team member, uh, is in the chat uh, answering questions too in regards to application uh, waivers and, and things like that. So Yutunde is here and and uh, can can answer any other questions there for you. Um, so with that, um, I think we're at the, oh, let's see, I think we're at the nearly at the end. Uh, two more questions, and then I'm going to drop off and allow my colleagues to keep on answering the questions. Um, once again, in regards to doctoral programs in mechanical engineering, we, we do have PhD programs. I would encourage you to visit our website to learn more about them. Graduate programs at the doctoral level admissions is quite challenging, to, uh, to be frank and honest. Um, the, we only take a handful of PhD students each year. The determination is based on the faculty member. So faculty members are the ones that make decisions if, if a student can join their research program. They're the ones that are providing financial support. We provide entrance scholarships there as well. So we would we really encourage you to see if your master's background, your research that you've done in your master's clearly aligns with faculty members' profiles and interests. If not, I would encourage you to continue to look for other opportunities because um, that alignment needs to be very clear um, there as well. Um, for the Master of Management uh, program, um, the question is uh, for the finance, which I'm thinking is you're talking about the master's of management in international accounting and finance. It does not require a GMAT. Um, so no GMAT is required for the master's of management in international accounting and finance. We do have an MBA program um, there as well, which does have a, a GMAT requirement. But uh, I'll tell you um, and everyone that the biggest in-demand program is the master's of management. The reason being the curriculum of that program is based off our MBA. So you still have an introductory um, uh, knowledge of accounting, the uh, finance, strategy, marketing, HR, but you get a lot of content in the discipline, international accounting and finance, logistics and supply, uh, data analytics. That's what employers really want. And that's why the master of management program which doesn't require an, a provincial attestation letter, has multiple intakes, is like the most in demand. 
I would really encourage people to think about that first. If they're thinking about getting Canadian work employment um, there as well, compared to a typical MBA, which has become very common in the Canadian uh, workforce um, uh, there as well. Once again, Yutunde has replied to the tuition fee about environmental sciences um, there, there, there as well. Um, now, and once again, um, I wanted to bring up the idea of uh, seats for fall. They're not all full. The question goes back to some of our academic programs have limited capacity, and so therefore we've reached capacity for fall. But I'm trying to encourage everyone to give thought to applying early. Realistically, even for fall, Getting securing a study permit for September is going to be challenging if you haven't applied already. So we would encourage you to think about um, still applying. If for some reason you don't get your study permit for September and you still get admitted, we will allow you to defer um, into the next intake. And you know, learners, we have thousands of students that join us in January and thousands of students that join us in May. Um, so don't don't be discouraged that um, maybe the program you're interested in now is at capacity, but just apply for the next intake. It, it is completely OK for you to still continue your journey. Uh, so with that, I, I am going to uh, have to hop off this call, but uh, I will make sure that your friends from uh, Maple will continue. Uh, if that's OK, Dina and Yutunde yeah. can stay on the line and keep on answering questions. But um, thank you for your time and your patience. And I really look forward to seeing you all at the University of Windsor. And if not, um, connect with your friends at uh, Maple and they'll be able to help. With that, uh, have yourself a great day. All right. Thank you so much, thank Dr. You. Chris. It's been lovely having you here. I think it's will be taking over from here. Great. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, I'm sure that most of us have heard um, everything that Dr. Chris has said. If you have any questions whatsoever, if you have any inquiries, especially regarding admission processing and visa processing, you can always reach out to us. Um, so we're Maple Education Canada. We help um, process admissions, undergraduate, postgraduates, and we also help to process visas. So you can always um, reach out to us either on social media on Instagram as mapleeducation.ca, Facebook, Maple Education in Canada, LinkedIn, Maple Education Canada, and on Twitter, Maple underscore education. Um, I'm going to drop, I'm going to drop um, in the group chat my email address so that if you have any inquiries, you can always reach out to me. So yes, we have marketing at mapleeducation.ca. If you would prefer a one-on-one -on -one conversation with one of our agents, any of our admission counselors, or even um, counseling on immigration, I would also drop my number in the group chat so that you can reach out to me. So yes, my email address, marketing at mapleeducation.ca and my phone number 091-551-91807. You can leave me a text message, you can call me, or you can reach me on WhatsApp and I'll make sure to direct you um, to an admission agent who will counsel you, take a look at your documents and help you start an application. And so we've come to the end um, of this webinar. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for your time. Um, I don't know if Dina or Yetunde are still um answering some inquiries in the okay. So I'm going to call out my email address again. Marketing at mapleeducation.ca. Marketing at mapleeducation.ca. And my phone number is 091-5519-1807. I'll write it down in the group chat again. So yes, 
So you can send me a text message, you can reach me on WhatsApp, on, or you can give me a call. Otherwise, if you would like to send me a mail, you can do that at uh, marketing at mapleeducation.ca. I will do well to respond to your queries as soon as possible. Um, Chris is no longer here. Thank you so much, Dina, for joining. Thank you so much, Yetunde. Um, and thank you to you two for attending this webinar. We hope to see you again on our next live webinar. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your evening.